Hello there, Dr. Anuj. And uh, many times when I go to connect with a lot of spiritual people and a lot of people outside in the world, they always ask me that, sir, can you give a scientific connect to spirituality? So can you prove God's existence in five minutes? Some things are the questions they're always asking. Yeah. I wonder, can you prove God's existence in five minutes? Okay, you got my attention. A man become preeminent, he is expected to have enthusiasms. 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 So, sometimes I always think how to give that, but then I gave a thought yesterday, and I'm here with a small experiment to show you how you can prove God's existence in not more than five minutes. Are you ready for it? Oh yeah, I am so ready for it. Let's do it, man, let's hear it. Okay, here we go. Here I have a small uh, particle of silicon dioxide, what we call in uh, chemical science as SiO2, which is a material simple made of dust. Now, what happens in this material is, it is made of silicon atoms and it is made of two oxygen atoms. 8 silicon, 8 silicon, and 2 oxygen atoms. 8 silicon, 2 oxygen atoms. Okay, I got it. So silicon dioxide is the constitution of this small little particle of dust. Now in this particle of dust, what is happening, if you go deep inside the scientific study, there is electron microscope, and if you go deep into the study of one article, Always understand this one thing, that if you understand one cell of the body, one cell of the body can make you understand the entire universe. The entire freaking universe? <laughs> one little, one, the whole universe. <sighs> because the Lord has made the entire universe made into similarity with any small cell of the body it is completely the same how let's go because there is a nucleus from there there are electrons from there these atoms are revolving in the orbits and then there is a cell right so the nucleus forms the crux of the cell similarly in this silicon dioxide there is a nucleus there are orbits and there are various orbits in which the electrons are revolving you may call it as the p orbit the f orbit and so many orbits are there so eight silicon and two oxygen radicals. Now, the question is that if we analyze by electron microscope, how these electrons are moving inside the orbits of this silicon dioxide? How are they moving? According to Newton's first law, it is said that a inert object cannot move from point A to point B unless an external unbalanced force is applied. Any object which is an innate object cannot move from point A to point B unless there is an external unbalanced force which is applied to displace that particle. So my question to you all is a simple question. People ask big, big questions. How is God existing? Can you prove God? My question to you is, can you prove to me that how is the silicon dioxide radicals moving inside the orbits of this SiO2, my dear friends? Can you please explain me that? Well, no, I can't explain that to you, but I'll tell you who can. My good friend, Foghorn Leghorn. Two nothings is nothing. That's mathematics, son. You can argue with me, but you can't argue with me. I relish the fact that you muster the strength to catch up to me. I know how you did. I don't know where you went. 